Greetings, comrades. My name is Jake Ansels. And today I'm going to show you, and as you may remember from my brisk, when I spoke about my, uh, my trip to, uh, to Wycliffe Bay, I was talking about how I had experience with a couple of the, uh, the frocks when it came to limestone and calcite and crystallization and everything. I was basically, I'm going to talk about, talk about a couple of samples that I had, uh, that I had, I took a, when I took when I went to, Char uh, from Charmouth Bay, so I can, um, so I can explain what they were and, uh, and you know, show them to you what what they're meant to be, at least. Okay. So basically, remember from my best from my trip to a white cliff there, I was talking about how I had experiences with a couple of rocks when it came to limestone and calcite recrystallization. So I was going to show you a couple of samples I took from Charmouth Bay. So okay, I'm going to go for the small one first. So this is a limestone rock. Doesn't look like much, right? I mean, you look at that; doesn't look like much and everything. You know, it's a bit broken. I found this on a fractured rock, so. This is lying there on top of rock where it'd be broken off, and I thought, oh, okay, I look at this. And I lifted it up, and I saw this. Nice, huh? So what do we have here? Okay, so yeah, we have fossilized, a bit of fossilized wood here, and then we have calcite crystals that had recrystallized due to the immense heat and pressure of the sink when it was submerged under the ocean, and yeah, but what ended up happening was apparently. Um, the, uh, the calcite within this uh, limestone mud had been forced out and then recrystallized around this rock. And as you can see, it clearly penetrated. Can you focus? Okay. As you can see, it clearly penetrated into the rock. And it's weird because this rock, if you feel it, like it feels smooth, like almost as if you're touching living wood. It, it's weird. So it's it's not it's not too thick, really. You know, it's only, it's only that thick. So maybe a couple of centimeters. And it clearly shows, you know, just. It just shows just how weird some of this rock stuff can be. I mean, you're gonna focus. Thank you. Well, so what happened was when I lifted this off the rock, and I, I saw the rest of the tree inside the rock, and I'm like, wow, but it was too big to take home. And I saw the rest of this rock just extending into the ocean. Like, imagine the rest of the tree was inside there. It was a very <coughs> interesting trip. Oh, uh, yeah. And, um. Yeah. See the weird little bumpy thing there? Is this thing ever. This thing never focuses. Why don't you ever focus? Sweet mother of nature, okay. Focus. I've got to get that. You see that weird lumpy thing there? Okay. That there is an ammonite. Which then makes you very curious because basically this ammonite's like somewhere inside this section of rock here. It makes you very curious. Why is there an ammonite buried in a right next to a tree in a rock? Right? Obviously, there had to be some kind of flood event, which washed up all the, which washed up all these sea creatures and stuff, and then one of them got caught up in this limestone mud, uh, with the, uh, with the tree, the unfortunate tree in this incident, and then was buried. Uh, so either, so either you know, this, this flood came along and buried everything in this limestone mud, or tsunami probably came along and then washed everything out to sea and then buried all this and then left the child being exposed. The next rock. It was a lot of fun to take back home because I had to carry this. And then when I was trying to carry this here, my dad was carrying the bag that this, these rocks were in. And he's like, oh, why is this bag so heavy? He opened this all the rock. And I was like, that's why. This thing is like, it's, it's heavy. It's maybe, maybe a kilo. This thing is probably three or four kilos, so it's much heavier. This is the big one. As you can see, it's very different. It too is made out of a limestone mud. And you can clearly see the mud and then like different banding from all the leaching and stuff going on and all these crystals. Basically, the force of this, the outward force of this crystallization was so much that it caused the rock to split. Where can I find a good example? There. It forced it to split open, as you can see. And I've always wondered, like, just what was this exactly? Because I didn't understand. I, always, I thought this was tree sap for some reason. You can see, like, all the bits of focus. You can see all the bits of inclusions and all the crystals here. Some of these crystals are absolutely tiny. Every... Every single shiny, every single shiny thing there's a crystal, right? Depending on the angle of light that you're looking at it, right? there's quite a few, and some of them are bigger than others, like these ones here, right? And then, oh yeah, I think this is another bit of fossilized wood. I'm not too sure. It, it probably is, I'll be honest. But the big, the, the thing I really wanted to show you was talk when I, I was talking about how big, how big some of these calcite cr cr crystals can be, and how sharp they are too. Is this bit here? I have to be careful because if I drag this too much, it's going to break the table or drop it with me. 
these crystals here. I spoke to this, this, this to my mineralogy lecturer, and he said this is an example of dog uh, dog tooth crystallization. These calcite crystals are, you know, a, a few millimeters long, right? So you know, you have very sweet grief. Okay. You have some very very tiny ones, and then they slowly start getting bigger and bigger and bigger until you eventually get quite sizable crystals. And as you can see, especially in this corner here, some of these. Focus. 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 Oh, come on, just focus, please. Focus. Thank you. Some of these are very, very sharp, like this one here. You can see. Um, they are. <laughs> they are very much sharp. These things, and uh, which is why they're known as dog tooth, due to their structure. You really don't want to poke one of these in the, you know, when you try to pick it up because it can, it can really hurt. And I actually did try and like feel out how sharp is this, and I can just just by feeling that I can feel how sharp it is. I mean, in respect to my finger, right? You can see just how sharp, just how thin and pointy some of these uh, crystals are. And dog, you know, dog tooth uh, crystalline crystals are, you know, interesting to look at. They're a lot better than just uh, plates or lumps of rock or lumps of crystal or anything. Let's just, let's just try not get into this thing's shade. Yeah, so you have all these, you have all this crystallization occurring along these, you know, crystallization occurring along this line here. Sometimes, sometimes like here, they meet up and then they, you don't really feel anything. Uh, sometimes you and you, you don't, and you feel like, oh, okay, this this one here, this one here, right there, that one right there is is actually really sharp because you, you get your finger caught there, and then when you try to feel out, you feel just how sharp it is. But you can clearly see just how. How many crystals are that make up this thing? It's it's quite something to look at. I was absolutely amazed when I saw this, and I didn't know what this was for like several years until I finally got to a finally found my until I finally came to university and spoke to my lecturer about it. So I'm I'm glad for that. But yeah, so it's basically these two rocks have formed in a ah ow these two rocks have formed in a uh, calcite no no a limestone mud. That due to immense heat and pressure, they recrystallized. One of them had a big fossil in it. One of them might have a tiny fossil in it, but whatever it is, you know. But both of them, are, both of them are special in their own way. This one's got an ammonite and tree fossil. An ammonite fossil. Wait, where is it? Here, the ammonite fossil there, and the tree fossil, and then this one shows an excellent example of dog tooth uh, crystallization. So, you know, they're, they're all they're both amazing bits of rock. I'm glad I have them. I'm gonna have to take, take the. I'm gonna have to take carry these home again. Okay, so just pity me when you may, when you when you uh, think of these rocks. Yeah, so they, these are the rocks I found from Charmouth Bay, uh, Charmouth Be uh, Beach. Bay. It's a very nice place to go to. Very well known for fossils. I'll say that. That's why I want to go back again someday. I've got a whole bunch of ammonites from that place, but I didn't bring them with me. Genius. Anyway, so if you liked the video, please give a like. If you to share my videos, if you like to think of them, any other things you want me to do, please subscribe to my channel so you can see more of this content. Please ring bell so you can get my video releases. Next episode, I'll probably show you more rocks because I love looking at rocks and fossils. Which is to do with my course, really. Yay! Oddly enough, it doesn't matter what I wanted to be, whether I wanted to be an archaeologist or paleontologist or a, uh, a historian or an ast astronomer, I always loved collecting rocks and crystals and fossils. So, no surprise on where I am now. See, so, time for, I'll, I'll do some more rocks here next video. See you next video, comrades. Until then.